Okay, so before I start, uh, let's recap a few things. So the other day I was talking about uh, log n, right? So this was actually log two based n. So if you write log n, uh, by that I meant two based log. So can someone tell me uh, what is the value of log say 16? All right, yes. So the reason is I have to divide it by how many times? Four times, right? To reach to one. Okay, so from 16, I have to divide it one, two, three, four times to reach one. So that's why log 16 is four. Or in other words, two to the power four equals to 16. So we can write that log to the four equals to 16. So we can write that log 16 is four. Sorry, yeah. Okay, so that was the log thing. Uh, now let's move on to our formal discussion and we'll try to find the time complexity of some algorithms. So here is a piece of code and we'll try to find out what is the runtime of this code okay so here first let's try to see what this piece of code is doing so you you are as an input we are given an array array means a list of numbers and then uh here what we are doing is uh we are running a for loop uh we are running actually two for loops and in each of the for loops, uh, there is one operation happening, one operation here, one operation here. So we want to see that how many, oh, we want to try to find the complexity in big O. Okay, so let's start. So you see uh, there is one operation happening here, right? One operation happening here and then another operation happening here, okay? So can someone tell me that how many times, okay, first let's say this. So input is a list of number. So usually what, how do we express the input size? What is the input size here? Can someone tell me? So input size is the length of the array, which is N, okay? Input size is N, so you see, in the first for loop, here in the first for loop, yeah, there is one operation happening each time, but how many times, if I ask you that how many times this for loop will run? How many times this for loop will run? Okay. Actually, it will run n times because it will start from zero, right? And length of the array is n, so it will run until the value of i is n minus one, right? So from zero to n minus one, how n times, right? So this will run n times. So that means in n times, how many total operations will be there? Each time there is one operation, right? So yes. n times means n into one operations, right? It was two. So that means the total number of operations in this first for loop is n right now in the second for loop how many times the second for loop will run again n times right so each time we are doing one operation so in total we'll do n into one that is total n operations right does it make sense to everyone and then there was one operation here one operation here one operation here so that was like three operations, which is constant. We can ignore that. So in total, there is two N operations, right? Happening. Or we can say if we want to be more correct, actually there is two N plus this, this, and this, these three operations. That means two N plus three operations, right? So order of the algorithm is order of two N plus three, right? We can write it as what? Order of two N, right? Why? Can someone tell me why we can exclude the three? Yes, it's constant. So 2n is the dominant term here, right? 
So, and then we can write it as order of n because we can ignore the constant here, right? So the first reason here was uh, 2n was the dominant term. And the second reason was like, we can ignore the constant, right? Because uh, whatever is order of 2n, it's also proportional to n, right? So it's order of n. So this algorithm is order of n or big of n algorithm. And does it make sense to everyone? So let's move on to the second algorithm. Uh, so this, what is the runtime of this code? So what this code does is, again, you are given a list of numbers or array of, so we say like the input size is input size is n, okay? And then we have uh, a for loop running. So how many times this for loop is running? The first for loop, n times, right? So this for loop is running n times. Now we see the second for loop, that one is actually inside the first for loop, right? Sorry. So this is the first for loop. The first for loop ends here, starts here. So the second for loop is inside the first for loop, right? Okay. Now, how many times the second for loop is running? It also is running n times. The reason is, yeah. So the reason is, uh, is every time it start with zero and uh, it ends with n minus one. So we can say this, when the value of i is one, a zero, right? The j goes from what? Zero to n minus one, right? When the value of i is one, again, j goes to zero to n minus one, right? So it goes on and on until the value of i is what? n minus one, right? And during that time, again, j goes from zero to n minus one. So that means, can we say that from here, it's n times, and in each of these n times, the inner for loop runs for another n times. So can we say that the total number of operations are n into n? Because there is n operations here, in operations here. So these goes on how many times? One, two, n times, right? So n into one, n. So the number of steps is n square and the time complexity of the algorithm is big of n square. Does it make sense? Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So here again, input size is n. because we are given a list of the no list of numbers, an array, we are given an array. So here you see we have again uh, two for loops, but th this is the inner for loop, right? This is the outer yeah. for loop. Now tell me th how many times the outer for loop will run? Yes, so the outer for loop will run. Uh, okay, so for each of those, for each of those, how many times the inner for loop will run? So here is the thing. So you see when the uh, i is zero, right? Let's try to write it. If i is zero, uh, j goes from one to n minus one, right? Okay. When i is one, j goes to two, two n minus one, right? Oh. Okay, so when i is two, j goes from three to n minus one, n right? Minus. So uh, can we say that uh, there is like uh, for the value of i zero, there is like n minus uh, one operations, right? Yeah. 
And next one will be n minus two. N minus two operations. Next one is n minus three okay. operations, right? So eventually it will be finally when the, the value of i is n minus one, right? Yes. J's value would be actually zero. J won't start because J will, will already be n minus, sorry, n, right? Which is greater mm -hmm. than array length, not less than array length. So when n minus two, J will go from one to one, right? That's it. Yeah. Okay. So that means, uh, that time we will have like one operation, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in total, how many operations we are doing? N minus one plus N minus two plus N minus three, right? Yeah. Plus yes. one, right? Uh, it's a series, right? Yeah. Yeah, we can write it as a one plus two, just reversing it, right? Yeah. Into n minus two plus n minus, or not into, sorry, n minus one, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just reversing it to this, right? Just reading it, writing it reverse in a reverse order. So what this is the series of the summation, right? Summation of the series, right? N into if there are like n numbers, it's n into n minus n plus one over two, right? So how many terms are here? N minus n one. minus one. n minus one, right? There is n minus one terms. So that means it becomes n minus one into n minus one plus one. So it has to be plus one over two. Is it correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So we can write it as n minus one into n over two, right? Mm -hmm. So we can write it as uh, half n square minus half n, right? Yeah. So can we say that the order is like order of uh, half n square minus half n, right? This is exactly as order of half n square, right? Yeah. Because n square is the dominant term, right? Yeah. Uh, and removing the constant, we don't need to that. So we can say it's order of n square, n square right? Yeah. Okay. So this okay. algorithm actually works uh, less number of times than the previous algorithm, but it's still it's order of n square. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, if anyone has any confusion, please ask question. Okay? So, don't hesitate. Please ask question. I will try to explain as much as possible. Otherwise, you'll see like probably some of your friends will explain. Uh, okay, so next one. Uh, let's try to see this one. Here you see we have two arrays, right? Two arrays as input. So we cannot say for sure that, that both of them have uh, the same size, right? We cannot say for sure. So size of A says N size of B is, I have to take a different one, M. Yeah. Because I don't know if they are, these two lists or these two arrays are of the same size. They might be of different size. So you see, we have a nested for loop here as well. So this is the outer for loop. And this is the inner for loop, right? So how many times the outer for loop runs? 
Yan times. Yan times. And for each of those in n times, how many times the inner for loop runs? M times. M, M times, right? See, in total, this piece of code, how many times this piece of code runs? N plus N. N yes. Order oh. of N into M, right? Yeah. The order of N M. So here we cannot say if, uh, yeah, depending on the value of N and M, then it depends, right? But this mm. is the best thing we can say that this is an order of NM algorithm, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so far, does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so here, Again, we are given a, an array of size, say, n, input size as n. Give me a second. Okay, so input size is n. Okay, so we have, uh, how many for loops do we have here? One. Just one, right? Okay, so, mm -hmm. and how many times does this for loop run? How many times does it run? N by two. N by two. N by two. N by two. Yes, so this runs N by two times, right? Yeah. And inside, we are just doing some assignments, right? We are doing like, four operations, right? Yeah. So it doesn't matter. So in total, we are doing like in this number of operations, right? Yes. Which is order of n, right? Correct. Yes. We can just write order of Two n, but it's the same as order of n. Okay. So this is an order of n algorithm. Any question? Anyone doesn't understand how we got to order of n? Okay. Or big O of n. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So which of the followings are equivalent to order of big N and why? Okay, so order of big N. Okay, so here you see the for the first one is order of N plus uh, P. Okay, n plus p. Uh, so we can replace the p with. We can write it like this: order of n plus n by two. N, plus, n by two, yeah. right? Can we write yeah. like this? Yes. Yeah. So it's order of n, right? Yeah. Okay. Because it's just proportional to order of n. Yeah. Order of 2n, can we write it as order of n? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, okay, next one. Order of n plus log n. Can we say this is also order of n? Because n is bigger than log n, right? Log. Okay. So that means n is the dominant term, right? Yeah. Okay. So this also can be written as order of n. Okay. Next for this one, can we write it as order of n? 
no no yes yes we cannot actually because we do not know if n is Which? greater than m if we yeah. knew this if this was true then we could write it as order of n because we could say that n is the dominant term but do we know this no we don't know right Since we don't know, so we cannot say which one is the dominant term, right? Yes. So yeah. this cannot be written as order of n. It will be still order of n plus m. Okay. So the except the last one, the other ones we can say is order of n. Got it? Any question here? Any question from anyone? Nothing. Okay. Okay. So let's move to the next one. Okay. So here is a function. And as you see, the name of the function is actually saying what is it's doing. So given any number, right? Any number n. Uh, this function is returning whether that number is uh, true or false. Uh, sorry, whether that number is prime or not. Okay. Uh, so tell me what is the uh, definition of the prime? Anyone can tell me what is the definition of a prime number? Divisible uh, by one and itself. Yes. So any number that is divisible by only one and itself. So suppose uh, a prime number is, suppose 37 is a prime number, right? Because you cannot divide 37 with anything else except one and 37, right? Okay, so what this algorithm is doing, you see, is this is, uh, so you are given, suppose, a number, uh, any number, say 14. So what this algorithm is doing is, it's trying to uh, divide 14 by, say, 2, 3, right? 4, 5, trying to divide it with everything, right? and see if it's divisible. So you see that it's given uh, any number n, it's first trying to divide it by two and seeing that if n is divisible by two, and then it's trying to see if n is divisible by, so it's trying to see if it's divisible, so n by two, is it true? No, if it's not, if, if it's not divisible, next is we'll try to divide it by three, right? So if it's divisible, in that case, the uh, remainder would be zero, right? So it's trying to see, it's trying to divide it with any other number, like two, three, four, five, six, so, right? And see if it's divisible by any of these numbers. If it's not if it is divisible by any of those numbers, then we return false. That means it's not prime. But in case it's not divisible by anything, so all the checks here fail, then it will go here and then say, yes, true. That means it's prime. Right? Okay. Now, here is the thing. You see here inside the for loop. Let's check the inside the for loop. You see... Uh, the for loop starts with two, right? So you see here, just look at this line. Int x equals to two. So the for loop looks like this. Or let me write it here. For int x equals to two. And then we could just do this, right? We could try to x less than n 
x plus plus we could just do this right that means we could have tried to divide n with everything that is less than n right instead of that you do you see that instead of that what it does is it just stops somewhere it just stops here okay so why is yeah. that because if the value if the multiplied value is greater than the n then you cannot divide it uh yeah that's true but what i'm trying to say is say you are given 36 okay mm -hmm. 36 so 36 how can we divide it so it's divisible by 2 right yeah, yeah. 2 into 18 it's also divisible by 3 right 3 into what is that 3 into 12, right it's also divisible by 4 4 into 9 right it's also divisible by 6 right 6 into 6 uh, i'm trying to understand why we are just stopping here you see that once i am trying to uh, trying with 2 right do i need to try with 18 No. I don't need to write. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is if I just check these numbers, like if it's divisible by 2, 3, 4, 6, I'm done, right? I don't need to check 18, 12, 9, and 6. The, because these are actually covering. Do you get my point? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, so that means... Here is the value of x is uh, so suppose if someone tells you that uh, check for me if uh, 43 is a prime number or not right so first I will try to divide it with 2 okay then I will try to divide it with 3 right then I will try to divide it with 4 then I will try to divide it with 5 I will try to divide it with 6 right and then you see I, I and all of these will fail right yeah then i i won't go to seven eight i won't go there the reason is you see seven was actually explicitly tried here eight was kind of tried here right nine was tried here so that what i'm trying to say is if you go until root over n you are actually covering the other side do you get my point yes does everyone get my point yes yes professor so i don't need to check everything we i don't need to check until 42. i am i am checking until uh seven sorry six and i'm done for 43 right because if anything was if 43 was divisible by anything from 7 to 42 that would have been checked here already okay everyone got what i'm trying to uh, explain yes sir. yeah Okay, if anyone is confused, just let me know. I will try to give you one more example. Yes, is it clear? So that means I don't need to keep on trying until 42. I can just stop at six. Right? Okay. Or, yes, okay. So that's why we are stopping here, you see. So when the value of x is root over n, then we are stopping, right? Because root over n into root over n is less than equals to n. That's where we are stopping. That's what it is trying to say, right? Yes. Okay, so the maximum value 
of x can be what root over n right yep okay so how many times this inside for loop is running then root n yes root n so here is the thing not all the time it will run root n times right so suppose if you are trying 36 how many times the inside for loop will run uh just one time just one time because when x is 2 36 divided by 2 it will already have a remainder of 0 and you will just say false done so one time right so if if the n is 36 then one time but if n is 43 in that case you have to go you will try with two, three, four, five, six, right? And then you will stop. That means, and then for the seventh time, you will also go there. And then it will, won't match. That means you will do the comparison seven times, right? On the seventh time, it will just fail. This follow will fail, but still you are comparing, right? So that means we, when we say, uh, the performance of an algorithm we always say about the worst case right in the worst case it will do maximum so that is what i'm trying to say the max value of x will be root over n so this algorithm is order of root over n depending what the value of n is 